A rare sign of solidarity in Malaysian politics. Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob and opposition leaders say they've agreed to find common ground and put the people first after months of infighting. The Prime Minister has met leaders from the Pakatan Harapan coalition seeking support for his new government. Melissa Goh joins us live now for more. Mel, is this a political ceasefire? Well, it is, after all, an agreement signed by all three opposition Pakatan Harapan leaders, namely PKR Arno Ibrahim, Amanaz Matsabu and DAP's Lim Guan Eng, together with newly appointed Prime Minister Ismail Sabri, to usher in a more conducive and cordial working relationship by putting the country and the people first before their self-political interests. Now, it's been a roller coaster ride uh, the past couple of years, which saw change of government and prime minister twice. Now, it's a good start, according to the joint statement. Uh, the meeting was called by the prime minister uh, welcoming the input from the opposition to better fight the pandemic and revive the economy by focusing on the welfare of the people, the poor and the unemployed especially. Now, Mr Lim, the former uh, finance minister, has proposed uh, an interest-free loan moratorium once again, uh, which the previous administration under Muhyiddin could not do. But opposition leader Anwar said that if Prime Minister Ismail Sabri can implement more effective measures prioritising the people, then the opposition is willing to support him if ever a confidence vote is tabled in Parliament when it sits in September. Now let's take a listen. Untuk menenteramkan dan mengurangkan suhu politik itu memang dipersetujui. Tetapi kita berikan isu-isu ini supaya menjadi tekanan dan keutamaan dalam tu baru. Dan kita beri jaminan kalau program pro rakyat, program penanganan COVID ini lebih berkesan, maka kita tidak ada masalah untuk kita menjamin supaya keadaan itu lebih terkawal. Now, Anwar said that the opposition has never asked for any cabinet position. It's not their intention in the first place. Now, the bipartisan corporation, which is still a work in progress, I must say, is in line with the King, Sultan Abdullah Ahmad Shah's decree for unity and political stability in the country. I think that the government must be able to once again perform its role as checks and balance and not just a, a shouting match each time an issue is brought up. Also stressed in the joint statement was the importance of judicial independence, good governance and institutional reforms. Lots of expectations there for Mr Ismail Sabri governments to fulfil. Mel, the Prime Minister's cabinet lineup that could be announced as soon as tomorrow. Do you expect any new faces? I mean, all eyes are on the new cabinet lineup. Whether there will be uh, any significant changes. Remember, we talked about how difficult it is for Prime Minister Ismail Sabri to trim the cabinet, given the humongous size of the previous cabinet with over 70 odd members. Now he has to balance the different uh, political interests of the different parties that support him, given his slim majority of 114 MPs. Any fall were to switch sides, his government will collapse. But the Prime Minister promised that this week that he will get it done, the list done, and sources are telling me that the list is almost ready and will be presented to the palace, to the king tomorrow, and announcement will be made after that, um, while the swearing-in ceremony can take place as early as Friday. Now, focus has been on the deputy prime minister position. Now, the former home minister, Hamza Zainuddin, is said to be the hot favourite to be his number two. Now, Mrs Ismail Sabri may drop a couple of so-called non-performing ministers in previous Muhyiddin-led cabinet. Now, there will be no appointment of those tainted by corruption charges into his cabinet. This is according to an inside source telling me and no minister mentor position as rumoured for former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin and there will be some new faces, especially in the health ministry portfolio, while Hishamuddin Hussein is likely to remain as the foreign minister. Mel, thank you for that update. Melissa, go there in Kuala Lumpur.